Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. I call these equations homemade because I kind of thought about this idea. I came up with the problem. I, I'm also going to show you, I'm going to show you the solution and I also want to talk about how you can come up with these kinds of problems, at least at the basic level, because these are fun to make and fun to solve. All right, great. So, and I'll be presenting two methods. Let me clarify. X and Y are greater than or equal to zero. And under those conditions, they're real numbers. We have this function f of X plus f of Y equals the square root of X plus the square root of Y. And we're going to be finding an expression for f of X. In other words, we're going to solve for function f. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be presenting two methods and also talk about the idea, like how I came up with this idea and kind of how we can use this in general. All right, great. So let's start with the first method. So for my first method, let me rewrite the problem f of x plus f of y equals the square root of x plus square root of y. At this point, I'm pretty sure you guessed and checked your work and you found the solution already for this function without doing anything that I'll, I'll be doing. And that's perfectly fine. That's going to give you a good idea. And, uh, you know, you can always check your work at the end. But uh, for my first method, I'm going to do the following. And this is a technique that we usually use with functional equations, uh, replacing x with 0. Of course, we have to make sure that the value we use is in the domain. And in this case, it is. Because x and y has to be, x and y have to be greater than or equal to 0. So if x is replaced with 0 everywhere, and by the way, this means that y is going to be left alone. So we're going to get the following. f of 0 plus f of y equals square root of 0 plus square root of y. If you simplify this a little bit, you're going to get the following. f of f of y equals the square root of the square root of y. You can also write it as the fourth root of y. It's totally up to you if you want to do that. That's fine, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Great. So we got an expression for f of f of y, not f of y, but this should again give you an idea what f is going to look like. But let's proceed with the solution. Let's go ahead and replace y with 0. And that's going to give us f of f of 0 equals square root of the square root of 0, which is 0. Great. So what is that supposed to mean? It just gives us that f of something is 0. What is that thing? We don't know what it is. Let's call it something. How about setting it equal to c? Because as you know, f of 0 is a constant, right? I mean, it's the value, the y value at x equals 0, if this is from x to y, of course, but we're using x and y interchangeably here. But anyways, so from here, we get two things. First, f of c is 0, but because our naming convention, we also get f of 0 equals c, which is kind of interesting, right? They kind of interchange. Great. Let's go ahead and save that information because we're going to use that in a little bit. Now, notice that f of c is 0, so how could we possibly use that information in the original equation? Let's go ahead and take a look at the original equation one more time. So this is what you'll be doing a lot of times when you have when you're solving a functional equation, you're going to have to refer to the original equation time to time because you kind of need to go back and replace x or y with something else. You know, constantly do it until you can arrive at a solution. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to replace y with c. Why? Because I do know the, the value of the function at c. In other words, I have the value of f of c. So if you do that, you're going to get f of x, by the way, I'm not replacing x with anything. So this is going to be f of x plus f of c equals the square root of x plus the square root of c. Easy, right? But look at this. What is f of c? It is 0. Awesome. Let's go ahead and replace it with 0. And guess what this gives us? It gives us f of x. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. So now we got the answer. Pretty much. Almost there except for the value of c because we don't still know what it is. But we're close. So we got f of x equals the square root of x plus the square root of c, which is a constant. How do you find the value of c? Well, since you know f of c, right, 
why not replace x with c again? I mean, we replace y with c, we got this. Now let's go ahead and replace x with c in this equation. And we get f of c equals square root of c plus the square root of c. Wow, that's like a nested radical. Doesn't look that good, right? But don't worry about it. We do know f of c is equal to 0. One more time, right? So let's go ahead and set it equal to 0. And when does this become 0? The square root of c plus root c is 0 when the c plus the square root of c is equal to 0. And this means c is equal to the negative square root of c. And then if you square both sides, you get c squared equals c. But c equals 1 is not possible in the real world, so c has to be 0. In other words, if you go back here, you got f of x as square root of x plus square root of c, but c is 0, therefore f of x is just going to be the square root of x. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick, and then I'll show you how I came up with this problem real quick. Okay, my second method is basically kind of similar idea, but with a little twist. We're going to replace y with 0, and then that's going to give us f of x plus f of 0 is equal to the square root of x. See, it's slightly different. Now, what is f of 0? I don't know. Let's call it c. Now, I get f of x plus c equals square root of x. Hopefully, you see what I see. And now, we're going to do the following. Replace x with x minus c, because you can do it. And then, you're going to get f of x equals square root of x minus c. Here's the thing. What is f of 0? c, right? So, replace x with 0, you're going to get the square root of negative c, but we also know that f of 0 is c from here, so set it equal to c, and you get the same thing, c must be 0. But otherwise, what number can give us this result? And since c is 0, we get f of x equals square root of x as before. So that's the function, that's the solution, and we're done. Let me go ahead and show you how I came up with this problem. So here's what I thought. So this is the bonus part. So I thought first, what do I want my functional equation uh, to be? Like, wh what, I, what do I want the solution to be? Okay, I said, you know what? I want the solution to be square root of x. Okay, I start with the solution. And then I kind of came up with an expression. Like, how about this? What is this equal to? Well, if f of x is square root of x, then f of y is going to be square root of y. Then I get this. And then what is f of this? Well, f takes the argument and just square roots it. So it's just going to take the square root of x plus root y. And I'm going to end up with this result. And that's how I came up with the solution. Because I know the solution doesn't necessarily mean I can find it easier. Because I still have to go through these steps. But anyways, this is how you can come up with functional equations. Start with the solution. And then set up your expression. Plug it in. Simplify and give it to us. Please share with us some of the functional equations that you can come up with, and then we'll see what you can come up with. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.